So I think what uh, where we left last week was process design analysis. I've shown you flowcharts as well as uh, time function mapping. So this is uh, it is a combination. It's a flowchart as well as a time function. Why is this time function? Because we are recording the time taken from one from the beginning of the order, product order, okay, until delivery to the customer, okay, or until you deliver to the you know transport you deliver to the customer. So if you analyze any jobs or any activities, you will always, uh, because not all processes are very effective or efficient, you know, and there's a lot of uh, wastages, waiting, waiting, waiting. So in, uh, in lead, later on, if, we have, uh, if you enter my production B, eh, production management B, we'll look into lead manufacturing, lead production. Muda, these are all Muda. Muda. Muda of weighty, Muda of transport. Transport, but this is necessary transport. Muda demo, uh, irimas, needed. <laughs> Need to move, uh, this is move. Okay, but it's not adding to the process. So we say that we can reduce from 52 days to six days. If you do improvement, basically you must analyze and do the improvement because all processes must must always be continuously improved. That's why I like the Japanese way, and China should follow. Okay, I I recommend you no know, companies that if you want to innovate and you want to find new new method, you must continuously improve. Kaizen, Mainichi Kaizen. Uh, Everyone Kaizen, every day Kaizen, and uh, every process Kaizen. So this six days, you imagine 50, 52 days of lead time compared to six days of lead time. If you are the customer and you order, which one would you choose huh? as, a, as, a, as a buyer? Definitely six days company. Definitely. You know, I'm just throwing you a question where answer is company B. Let's say this is no different company. This is, but this example is actually showing improvement. But imagine company A can say, say to you, I can deliver you five days. With the quality. Of course, with the quality. Not delivery fast with no quality. Quality means meets all the requirements, meets all the specifications, and so on. Okay. And I've already explained to you various very uh, value stream mapping, where you you know there is a very small portion of the process is actually adding value. So we want to determine that. And this is a this is just a method of uh, what they call coming out with the map mapping. Uh, very brief, eh? this is very brief, very simple explanation. Um, you know, but if you go through you know, the detailed process, is going to be uh, more more detail and more detail. Okay, but the idea is this: you have to understand the whole uh, the whole activity. So this is the value stream, the flow of value. We think that it adds value. It adds value at the end. You know, it is necessary. I'm not saying it's not necessary. We need to move the, the products daily, 500 pieces move. This order, 2,500, will go weekly to the production line. This is the price of production. Or your process, basically, right? So, so the added value is 45 second, 40 second, 15 second, 20 second, 20 second, which gives you 140 seconds. But of course, you know, can we reduce the inventory, for example? Can we reduce the inventory? This is 1,500 inventory, which is three days inventory. That's why in Toyota production system, they call it JIT, 
just in time system. JIT means if I do not need 1,500, I should reduce this to the minimum stock. Say, for example, no, what do I, I want to reduce it to 10 only. So it will result into peace flow, peace flow. That means you only make what is required, what is needed. So this also will become 10. The smaller your inventory, the lower your cost. The smaller the amount that you keep in the process, for example, between assembly and test, assembly, test, two operator, one operator. In between, there is 2,000 pieces waiting for this, doing nothing. The, the assembly wait there, waiting to be tested. No value. No value. So that's why it is called value stream. We reduce this, we reduce this. Okay, so we can come up with a future uh, no, a value stream mapping. Another, uh, what you call a process analysis is process flow chart. Now, in any process also, where this is, this is more micro, more detail. For example, this, uh, this machine operator, is 45 seconds. So what is he doing? So you come up with a process chart. Process chart for the you know, machining process, assembling process. And then uh, you describe the steps. This is the steps. You, you, you go to McDonald's. If you go and work in the McDonald's, you can see, take piece of paper. You know, take the bun, put the burger. So you can see the process and in process chart, we use five symbols, five symbols. O is operation. So that's why you have here O. Arrow is transport or move, okay? Square is inspect, D is delay, and then storage, storage is keep, eh? okay, keep, storage. So what happened is this. So meet fatty in storage from storage, because it's storage, go transport, transfer to broiler. This is transfer. Broiler is actually doing the operation. The first operation is broiler. Then after broiler, they go for visual inspection. So that's why the, the line connects to visual inspection. So this is the connection of lines between the steps, all the steps until the end. And during the steps, you can collect the time. And also the distance travel. If this is a big place, but if you're only in one station, there is no distance travel. Okay. But still you need to take the bun, you know, there is some places you have to walk. So you you note down. And you can see the total here. Total time is 3.15 minutes. There is a total of two operations, four movement, transport, one inspection, and two storage. The value at the time is the operation time divided by the total time, which is 85.7%. Of course, that's detail, eh? that's detail. But this is a process chart. And for any process, we can actually do this analysis. Why we do the analysis? Because we want to do improvement. We want to design the process, redesign the process, make it much more easier. Not, not make faster, make faster is also important. Huh? Make faster is also important, but uh, easier, maintain quality. Yeah. Right, any question? Any, anything that probably you want to? Uh, professor? Yes. Uh... On process chart, mm -hmm. value added time is not including inspect time. Why? Uh, Why is value added time is not including inspection time? Uh, okay, for this company, uh, this company, mm -hmm. he has they have made the only thing that is 
value adding is the operation mm. because you know, inspection is not adding value because inspection is um, um, additional work additional it's not adding value okay if for this case I, in this case thank you so you can remove the you know they, they remove the 2.5 2.5 yeah it only adds up the operation time Okay. Thank you. Any, any, anything else? Yeah, then. Okay. But of course, this is uh, there is there are idea, there are more detail on this actually. Yeah, this is just uh, on the surface. Yeah. There is a topic called uh, method study or uh, method and time study. So we'll cover that in next semester in, in much more detail on this uh, methods analysis. We call it methods analysis. Okay, uh, so it's, we all already see how uh, products, okay, products uh, that uh, process involving, involving products, you know, uh, design. But in service also, we need to design the services. Okay, so this is uh, the, the design is uh, named as service blueprinting. Okay, so Service so blueprinting is actually a way of seeing how customer and the provider interacts. So it's actually focusing on the customer and provider interaction, right? And it will be defined in three levels of interaction. Uh, customer in control, customer interacts with the service provider, uh, service is removed from the customer control and interaction. So, so this this three level. Okay, there's there's three level. See level one. So this we're talking about this three level. After this, okay. Let me let me just finish. So three levels. Each level has different management issues or uh, different um, things that you need to take care of. Okay, thing that you need to identify. So it says identify potential failure points between customer and service provider. For example, in hotel, you, you go to the hotel. Okay, but today there's a lot of automation in hotel. <laughs> automation. So interaction is uh, getting lesser because of COVID. I know service, there'll be a big change, I think, in service, service uh, organization. Because of the pandemic, there is um, worry about transmitting transmission of a disease, then they will try to automate as much as possible in service. Okay. But anyway, when we design the service, okay, we have to, it's a blueprint. We come up with a blueprint. So in, in a service, we have to have a blueprint. It flows from the customer right until they, they complete the, the job. So for example, this is actually, um, you know your, your car, you send for service. At, uh, you know, in Malaysia, we have uh, sales and service centers, okay? So let's just imagine that you are driving into a service center, you want to get your car service, okay? So the, the design is the customer arrive for the service. So, you know, probably there is already appointment system or if, if it's working. So if, there will be a three minutes, uh, you know, uh, interaction, okay? Then it will actually, okay, warm greeting and again, service request. If it is a standard request, what is the action? determine the details, and then what if it is, uh, if there is no standard request, okay, you determine the certification, but if there is a specific request <coughs> by the customer, so you follow through. This is the service diagnosis. This is the performance of the service. Performance service, this is exactly what the, the, the provider will do actually. Yeah? 
So when you know the things to change, for example, I want to change my oil, I want to change my, you know, this uh, wiper, water, whatever, or engine oil. So notify customer and recommend alternative provider. If you cannot, uh, you know, if you cannot do it, no. If it just goes down here, if it's yes, perform it. So there is two route. So this is they cannot do it, then the customer will depart. But you have to have a friendly close. I mean, you greet. I mean, in Japanese, it's very, very good. <laughs> you know, you go to a department store, department, they greet you. So this is, uh, this is very, very, you know, uh, clear in, in Japan. Okay, uh, for request for invoice and go out. Okay, pay and go out. So this level one is customer is control. Let me see. This is customer, customer level. This is customer. B is interaction between customer and provider. This is customer only. Okay, customer and provider. Uh, then here there is no customer. This only provider. Customer is not not. This is bedroom. You know bedroom. Bedroom means uh, you go to a hotel. You only you know you come and you see the front desk. Front desk is here. So this is level two. All here. But you know, it, all these are behind the scenes, which is actually uh, also uh, what do you call? Uh, uh, I, I, I call just no, a bedroom, right? Okay, bedroom. Bedroom means uh, beyond your view. Beyond your view, you cannot. You are you are not able to see. You know, for example, you go to big restaurants. Oh. In Japan, that's very good because some of the you know, the cooking is um, you can see <laughs> transparent, you know, uh, tempura cooking you can see. <laughs> so no, no, no barrier, <laughs> no barrier. But big restaurant, the kitchen is is at this level three. Okay, beyond the uh, beyond customer control, beyond customer interaction. So this is a service blueprint. So for all services. Please design the service using some kind of service blueprint. Okay, it is very important. Okay, because of the interaction between customers and providers, you need to consider uh, carefully you know, some of these things. Special consideration for service process design. Uh, some interaction is necessary with customer. Uh, if the design, if the service requires a lot of interaction, then you need a very skillful person to take care of customers because performance can be affected adversely. Adversely means um, strongly, okay? That means you will either be very, very good, be very good, excellent, or Poor, all right. So this, uh, the better these interactions are accommodated in the process design, the more efficient and effective the process is. That means you have to think about the interaction that is required eh, between customer and provider. Okay. And of, of course, you have to find a balance between cost and customer interaction. Okay. To help this, we need to see this matrix. Okay. We need to see this matrix. If you see here, there is four quadrants. One is mass service. There is professional service. There is service factories. This is categories of services. And this is the uh, degree of uh, labor involvement. Okay, labor involvement, whether it is high involvement or low, lesser, lesser, okay, lower level. Uh, of people involved, okay? For example, uh, no frill airlines have many mm, less, less interaction because uh, a lot of things are automated. You have to check in yourself, you can check in your own. Versus conventional airlines, okay? Conventional airlines uh, having, uh, at least should be higher here, probably it is, uh, you know, mass service. Eh? So if you see here, mass service, commercial banks are mass service, retailing are mass service, 
um, uh, boutiques. But the, the point is this, eh? okay? Uh, so how companies find opportunity for unique competitive is to move from retailing to boutique, for example. So this oval means rather than retailing common retailing you go to boutique rather than commercial bank you go for private banking which is much more competitive you can get this is professional service for private banking not for everyone <laughs> only for rich people or can you mochi no hito private bank <laughs> understand okay so this is professional service uh, because the, the, the def definition of this uh, professional service is high, high degree of customization and high labor you know, involvement. Because when you say high labor involvement, the, work, the, the uh, worker or the officer will attend to you, will take care of you. Okay. Uh, okay service shop, hospitals are service shops. And they move on to specialized hospital. Fine dining can move to uh, fast food restaurants. Of course, this is much more competitive, eh? right? So this this is a uh, you know um, some kind of some kind of guidance. Okay, some sort of guidance in terms of how we actually uh, decide where you want to actually uh, you know be in our service processes okay um right any question this is a service process design something that you need to be uh considered that you need to take, take care of where where you're going to you know put your process uh i want to yes. ask again degree of labor is what degree of labor is the degree of involvement that means, uh, that means if it is high involvement, there is high interaction and you need many labels, many labels and high interaction. Okay, compared to like, for example, no frill and line, less involvement, not many staff. Okay, not many people will take care of you. You know, they say no frill, no frill means, you know, no frill, Asia, you know, all this. You do it yourself, okay? Warehouse and catalog shop are also low labor involvement. Warehouse, you go to IKEA. IKEA, you choose your own and you bring, there is no, no one to help you. Mm. you everything is instruction, okay? Um, so that, that's the, the difference between low low degree of labor, low involvement, and the, the, the amount of labor that you have. The number of, especially, uh, for example, in professional service, you need expert. Expert which actually can actually uh, provide personal, personal uh, explanation, personal guidance. Okay, so that, but this is general. Okay, it's not really uh, fixed. Thank you. Right. Okay. Uh, so that's why low labor intensity, there is a lot of room for automation. Okay, a lot of room for automation. Also, oh, it's involved here. Okay, <laughs> explain in detail here. Yeah. Right. Mass service and professional service, low labor involvement is high. So that means you need to focus on human resources. Very important, okay, at the upper, these two quadrants. A selection of training is highly important because it is um, uh, high labor involvement. If the employee makes mistake, it is costly to the organization, okay? They will make, uh, you know, customer dissatisfied because of their poor performance, okay? poor performance. And it is a personalized service. You go to, um, well, banking is a person, personalized service, but now you see a lot of you know, automation already in uh, a lot of things. Eh? 
uh, right. So service factory and service shop automation of standardized services. That's why that's why I mentioned no frill airline. There's a lot of uh, standardized uh, services. And one more thing, this is also important. Restricted offerings. Do you understand what restricted offerings mean? Because this is not mass customization. If you look at, uh, if you compare, mass uh, professional service is it's not mass customization. Mass service is mass customization. Service factory is like our repetitive production. Remember, repetitive production, making a lot of bicycles. Okay. So very restricted offerings, meaning you only have two, three, you know, um, items that you sell, or less than you know ten items, twenty very uh, variant model. So this uh, this level low labor intensity responds well to process technology and scheduling. So scheduling is uh, important as well as process technology. To actually you no know, service uh, fast uh, because fast food fast food is here right fast food and tight control to maintain standards tight control because McDonald's is here McDonald's is here fast food restaurant so it is service factory low labor low service low customization sorry low customization Okay, fine restaurant is customized. Okay, so that's uh, that's the difference. You understand? And any question? So this is the difference. Yes, I, yes Paul. Question: Why airlines are include? Why airlines is included in this quadrant service factory? Yeah? Service factory. Do you have another place for airline? What what you what where would you probably put uh, airline? Airline, let's think about it. It is low labor, right? Unless it is a it is a private jet, private airline, <laughs> private jet. You know private jet, private jet service. You know. Um. This is this is airlines is uh, it, if you look here there is only a small difference in terms of labor involvement between mass airlines and no frills because it's still a service factory you how many people take a flight from for example Kuala Lumpur to Narita if uh, if I if if uh, Japan Airlines use uh, seven 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 seven, how many passengers? More than four hundred? Huh? Maybe? Ah, oh, maybe? Yeah, four hundred. No freeze airline. For example, use also Airbus three 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 zero or three eight zero. Well, three hundred plus. It is mass service. It is a service factory, factory service factory. Many many people. It's not private airline. Private airline, private jet. It's maybe maybe here, maybe here. Professional service, hi. Or maybe here, service shop. Maybe here, private airline. Mm. So this is because there is no much difference between the, the traditional airline and no frills because it still move a lot of people. Only you know, the number of the level of labor involvement is lower for no frills <coughs> than normal airline. So it's still a service factory. It is still a service factory because it moves a lot of people at one time. <laughs> okay. 
you, you agree oh you think it's, uh, yes. it, it's it makes sense right unless you want to go for pri private uh, specialized service then it goes to you know a service shop okay so in, this is in general uh, right the, the 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 classification uh, the classification classify into service sector classify into service shop and then uh, you know mass service professional service so how to service uh, improve service productivity because uh, service is very uh, what you call we cannot predict exactly the demand right you do not know how many people will come to the bank you do not know it's a it's a very <coughs> um, very difficult very difficult to focus like, basically okay so how to improve service productivity uh, strategy separation structuring service so customers go where the service is offered so you open a new account to a lot of users so this customer go to a manager so this is you 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 structure uh, the, the different uh, you know uh, types of service required by by the customer loan in this department uh, for uh, opening a new account so you do actually separate uh, separation strategy or self service strategy this is actually to increase increase efficiency uh, efficiency self service so customer examine uh, this we have seen this supermarkets our i have a uh, uh, video on McDonald's, uh, what you call self service, eh? self service, self service, banking, self service, uh, postponement. Today is not only self service, you can do everything online. Eh? In, uh, in China, there are places where you only bring a handphone eh? Alibaba, <laughs> this is Alibaba, or use uh, WeChat to pay in china not in all cities is it in all cities oh not all cities right some cities they actually require a lot of business to use uh, uh, payment system by electronic payment system is it in china i heard about it do you know uh, pardon there are some places in China that actually uh, require customers to pay by uh, electronic payment. That means using WeChat, using uh, Alibaba. Uh, is it in Shenzhen? I heard. I heard. You know. Uh, I think yes. I think. Yeah. Right. Uh, Shenzhen uh, is very very advanced in terms of that. So that's self-service, it's basically self-service. You don't want to ask the customer to bring the money and then get the change, you know, give all three, and then you have to handle the money, bring the money to the bank. <laughs> so this, and then you get robbers, you know, robbing the bank. <laughs> so it is uh, it's a way of uh, you know optimizing postponement, customer customizing at delivery. Uh, okay, uh, okay. This is, for example, you are making vans. Vans is kind of truck. So you customize at delivery rather than at production. Means at the place of delivery, you do all the uh, customization. So this is called postponement. You do the assembling or you do the you know changes at the customer's place at the delivery. Focus receiving the offering. Okay, this is also a way of trying to make yourself efficient. You know, when people do business, make a new restaurant, they, they want to say, okay, I want to sell everything. Like in Malaysia, a Malaysia restaurant, you can find any food, you know. Uh, but in Japan, there is a good, very good. Uh, there is a shop that actually, uh, tempura shop, and then a sakana shop, and then this is only a shabu shabu shop. Very, you know, very focused. So customer will know. Good food, okay, go here. And there's also Chinese restaurant, eh? Chinese. Uh, <laughs> so this uh, limited menu, eh? modular, uh, modular selection of services. Okay, this is design, eh? design, 
for example, investment, investment in insurance selection, or modular production in pre-packaged food, especially in COVID today, we see a lot of modules in restaurant where we have to pre-packaged food modules. You cannot buy and live in the restaurant. Uh, you cannot you cannot actually stay in a restaurant and eat in Malaysia, for example. So they, they have to pre-package the food. Online, online, uh, online food, for example, very popular now in COVID. Really popular. Order online <laughs> and uh, uh, grab grab driver or Uber, is it? Or food panda. Okay. They will send it. Okay, automation is another strategy. Automatic teller machines they have been here very long time already. And uh, I recently saw a hotel in uh, Japan automated uh, check in and check out. Okay. Um, scheduling you can also do that. Scheduling ticket counter personnel at 15 minute intervals at airlines. Okay, scheduling ticket counter personnel. That means the person who take care of the. Um, Ticket counters. Uh, okay, training can also help to improve productivity. Training for the employees actually. Eh? Okay, how to avoid problem. Do you know in uh, in call centers? You know call centers. You have a problem. You call. You buy some product. A lot of Japanese companies actually invest in Dalian, Dalian, Dalian in China. There is a city called Dalian, Dalian in China. Oh, there is a city, city Dalian. Dalian. Dalian, Dalian. Oh, Dalian, yeah. In China. Yes. And Dalian we... is famous for. Oh, they they have. Uh, you know, Japanese speaking operators responding to call centers uh, problems. You know, you have you buy a certain product, okay, you need to install this, install the computer. So the call centers are actually in China. Same like Bangalore, India. Bangalore is call center for many of the call services from US because it's cheap. It's cheaper to put your call center in Dalian and also in Bangalore than to put it in your home country. Have you heard of this? Call centers. Call centers. So they train people to speak uh, good Japanese. They, 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 they know how to respond and so on. Of course, in uh, call centers, normally they have scripts. What to answer, what to answer. It's very automated scripts okay training eh, is also one now uh, I, I don't want to go to very very detailed on production technology but just to make you aware to make products we talk about process design process means we need to have steps of doing job as well as machines and equipment so these are the range of equipment and technology machine technology Automatic identification system, RFID. You've seen this, you know, it is there is RFID. QR code. Now we go everywhere, QR code. Same in Japan also, right? You know? Naika, Marishawa, Itsumo, Doko Demo, Itte. No, QR code. Naika, Japan. <laughs> in Malaysia, we have to, we have to uh, check in. If I go to a restaurant, I have to check in. And then sanitizer, temperature check. You know temperature check? Every time you go to a departo, temperature check. QR code, OK? Right. Uh, there are process control. There are vision system. There's robots. There's a lot of things. You can Google some of them. I, will, I want to show you one or two, OK? One or two, like ESRS, yeah? one of the things. Machine technology will actually uh, increase precision, increase productivity, and so on, because you're using machine, right? Rather than man to do the job, for example, cutting, uh, grinding, and so on. Okay, and it is based on computer numerical control. So, 
today, you know, some of you probably never know. See, she and she. Nihongo mo na jiyo. She and she. <laughs> she and she. Computer numerical control. Why? Because machine is controlled by computer. It's like robot also, right? Robot is controlled by computer to do the movement. Okay, movement. We will, we will actually have to do this machine. Machine is very, very important in today's uh, what you call production line. AIS, automatic identification system. And I think last week also, I with you not you. Uh, mentioned to me about unique law you put in the shirt inside the bag barcode then list all the the the, the price and also total checkout counter checkout counter unique law that is ais basically because they use barcodes and rfid so you put in inside this so they detect everything is there Technology, technology, or self self scanning, self scanning. Okay, uh, you can you can Google and process control. Process control is actually real time monitoring and control of processes where sensors collect data and they will read data on priority basis. This is a control center. Control center for many things. Many things have control center. Right. <clears throat> so computer programs, uh, you will take measurement translated into digital control. How Japan railway, subway, and uh, scheduling line. Control center, you know. There must be a control center to collect sensor, sensor uh, uh, train pass through, and then signal red, blue, uh, red, yellow, change, can go this way, track, can go that way. This is, this is con process control. That is in a train, in big factory, the line connection between one part and another part. So you need a control. You cannot just, you know, automation, no control. You will see one video. I will show you one video after this. But you know, it is actually ASRS, but it relates to that vision system. You know, today we can use vision camera to do inspection. We can use camera to do uh, what do you call uh, a lot of other things. Okay, performing the same task because if you ask a, a, a person. To check, use eyes, check, check, check. It is after some time, the worker will feel tired. Check, boring, tired, boring, make mistakes, make error. Why? Because human being is not 100%. So that's why you need pokayoki. You need so pokayoki. Huh? Yes, so. It's not perfect. Yes, human exactly. Being. Uh, human being is not perfect. Human being get tired. Human beings will will fall asleep. <laughs> okay. So, so you use vision system. So this, for example, there is a vision system to check the surface. You know, I went to Canada in 1992. I went to a factory making potato chips. Potato chips from raw potato, okay. It is McCain's. McCain's is actually a very big company in uh, USA. McCain's. Thank you. Potato, raw potato, cut. You can fry, right? Go to the production line like this. Like this, go, and there is a camera. Check whether there is black spots, whether size is not. So okay, we'll go this line, go this path. Not okay, go here. 
so separation. 1992 already vision system. Today, today more, <laughs> more definitely more. Okay, and robots because of robots. Robots is important because you are going to have some dangerous jobs. So let the robot do the job. Robot can do dangerous job or monotonous. Monotonous means same thing, same, same. Monotonous, like the worker doing the inspection. Monotonous. Monotonous means very boring. Same, 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 same. same. So you, you let robots do the that, that job. Uh, or requiring strength. Shikara ga iriman. Robot. Eh? And also precision. Precision, you know, precision. Very accurate. Very accurate job. Very accurate. Nano, smaller size. Okay. You go and Google in the internet. Denso. You know Denso? You Google Denso robot. Uh, pick and place. Okay, after this, we'll, I will show you. Okay. For our break, I will show you. I will find for that uh, Denso pick and place uh, robot. Okay, Very accurate. You know, you can put this uh, uh, mechanical pencil. Okay, the 0 0.5 millimeter mechanical pencil lead. Pencil lead. ASRS, automated placement. I will show this video. Okay, it's, uh, it is a storage and retrieval system. It's a warehouse. You automate automated placement and withdrawal. It's like Japan car parking system. You know, in uh, Tokyo, you park the car in the tower. That is ASRS. Park the car, go up and park. And then it, when you want it back, they will take it down for you. This is automated storage and retrieval system. Your car parking in Japan is ASRS. And of course, you will get reduce errors. <coughs> it is in, this is useful in inventory. That's why a lot of warehouses, they use this. They use ASRS. AGV are automated guided vehicles. It is electronically guided and control. There is a magnetic uh, you know, path here, magnetic path on the floor, at the floor. So they will follow the, the, the road, the magnetic path. It's like a rail, you know, in train the rail. So it's also following that movement. You can move here, you can move here. So it is, uh, you know, AGV, automated guided vehicle. In Toyota, there's a lot of AGV in Toyota. In Toyota uh, factory, they use a lot of AGV for movement of products and individuals or individuals. Not, not individual, basic products or sex individuals. <coughs> so we go to a much more advanced you know, system, we call it flexible manufacturing system, where there's more control of computers uh, on the workstation and the material handling equipment. This will increase much more, you know, uh, faster. Okay? Uh, of course, it requires high volume. Nah. It can be uh, can actually produce low volume at high quality. Eh? Okay, for FMS. Uh, reduce change over time. So I'm not okay. This is just concept. Okay, I'm not going to go to detail. CIM extended flexible manufacturing, which actually goes until uh, engineering design and inventory control and. Uh, until design uh, backwards because it's integrated. Uh, integrated means from engineering to you know warehousing. It is control uh, computer control. That's why it's called computer integrated. Uh, from the software, from the location, from the warehousing, it is actually uh, connected. Uh. I think we are seeing it today. This was a concept 20 years ago, but today we are seeing this uh, 
being done for example amazon amazon.com or alibaba you know, it's connected you know through this uh, network of uh, computer systems okay and can also include financial and customer service areas customer service repair services warranty so it is uh, getting much much more complicated no? much more complicated uh, and you can you can produce it as at a very low cost actually today very low cost so this is this is the picture of it eh? it's very when you integrate all this you're integrating the process control you're integrating your computer aided design the computer aided manufacturing your agv agv hrs robots so this is as a concept it's called computer integrated engineering you need to be able to make sure information from design goes to manufacturing. Imagine eh, you make a product, the design uses some computer software. If the computer software is not compatible with manufacturing, you cannot make the product. So the software must be, you know the word compatible? Compatible means same language for example you write in pascal language then this uh, place they use fortran how to talk for example this talk japanese and here talk english so how to communicate must have translator translate then only can do the work so machine made in germany machine made in germany use german software Software, German language. Then transfer to Japan. Japan use Japanese language. Cannot talk. When cannot talk, cannot move. <laughs> so that is the, you know, the challenge. The challenge is actually to integrate so that you will make sure it work. It talks to each other, and you know, you see material flow and information flow. If the information does not flow, there is a, no. There's a block, then you will start to see problems. Okay, but the concept is this: eh? it's just a concept of trying to integrate. When designing the system, we had to consider the customer's requirements, mainly in terms of storage capacity and performance. So as usual in our industry, the implementation time was the biggest challenge overall. This not only in terms of fulfilling the installation of the system and the go-life within the schedule, but also to adhere and meet individual deadlines so that the overall construction process does not... Uh, ...tuber system right, to the uh, ramp-up warehouse. Right? So we patented actually the entire very innovative design and uh, put it in, right? put this up as a nerve center for logistics and supply chain in Asia. That is the reason why we selected Shaper because we are looking at their technology that can actually plan with us. Our software solutions and their technology should be able to interface correctly for everything to work. So it's not just about hardware, it's also about the co-mingling and the cohesion, right? And the fusion between our logistics system together with their software that command basically all the same. This is a material handling system for the material center, stop, uh, then turn right. There are sensors. Sensors are everywhere. The project features 45 meter high single mass stacker cranes able to handle 1.2 tons of weight each. This in itself is quite an engineering challenge. So this fact together with putting European engineering and European and international standards in line with local regulations, in particular fire safety aspects, adds an additional layer of complexity in implementing the project and meeting the schedule. So the scope of supply under this project comprises of a complete 18-aisle automated storage and retrieval system for the handling of pallets. The automated system itself 
consists of 18 stacker cranes, 45 meter high, and pallet conveyors on all the four levels to connect to the adjacent building. So we need a very strong partner that can help us uh, ensure that whatever we instruct in the cranes to move is done correctly, all right? And the feedback instantaneous and no error at all. 100% accuracy. The uh, maintenance system, of course, uh, is still a long way for us to see that. But of course, from past experiences, they've been able to do a, a good job uh, moving forward. The conveyors itself uh, feature chain and roller conveyors, right angle decks, but also pallet stackers and pallet D stackers for the uh, processing and handling of empty pallets. The whole system is uh, controlled by Schaefer's warehouse control system, WAMAS. On the whole, uh, the relationship has been very good. Uh, we work very well together, at least. Or Yuma? Yes, it's very big, but big in uh, London. Yesterday, I watched TV. Uh -huh. and see DHL inventory inventory uh -huh. and many people uh, control product but product but on this video no people yeah in yeah. inventory so it's very right. um, so what your productivity what, is very good exactly exactly because uh, because human beings uh, today, I think we that's 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 what I mean by uh, you know trying to remove costly because sometimes people are costly. Mm, yeah. And you have to pay health services. You have to pay, mm. especially worker level. Like in Japan, it's also a problem today that you do not have enough workers. You don't have new. You know, uh, it's an aging society. There is less, uh, you know, young people or child being born. So, twenty years down the road, you don't have enough uh, what you call people to actually. So you need to automate and robotize, yeah, make uh, robots. But, but I think you know, Japan is doing very well because maybe no next step uh, in technology and hospitality. Uh, and giving the customer choice uh, in our restaurants. We have self-order kiosks now where the customers there, can order at their own pace, and we're introducing some new products as well. I'm going to order my sandwich now, and Brandon's going to walk me through the process as a host in the lobby, and he's going to assist me because some people that are older, like myself, maybe aren't in touch with technology. <laughs> so here we go. Okay, so first we, we test the start. Okay. Okay, and do you, is it for here to go? I'm going to order in because I like the table service. Okay. okay. Do you know what you want to order today? I want to order a Big Mac sandwich. Okay, so Big Mac would be in burgers, burgers category. And you will go click the Big Mac there. Big and Mac. You want just the sandwich, right, sir? I want just the sandwich. So you click the picture, just the sandwich. And would you like to modify your sandwich in any way? I want to add lettuce and light mayo. So you would hit the edit button. Okay. And uh, click the picture of the sandwich. Anything you would like to add or subtract away from your sandwich, you can do so here. All right, so I want to make it light mac sauce, and I want extra shredded lettuce. Okay, and then you will apply your changes to your sandwich. Apply changes. You have the sandwich the way you would like. I have it the way I ordered it, and then good to go. Part of Experience of the Future is table service. So after I complete my order on the kiosk, I can pay with credit card right here at the device, or I can go up to the front counter. We have crew people at the front counter to pay cash. But if I'm eating in and I want dine-in service, I would grab my order number and you put in the order number on the screen. And so I can just sit down anywhere in the restaurant and they will bring my order out to me. Okay, reflections, any, any opinions? Nathan, any opinion? Uh, in Japan? Hi. In my experience, um, uh -huh. at McDonald's, uh -huh. uh, many people make line, line and wait hamburgers. Oh, too many so, people. Yes, and slow, slow. slow. Yes. It becomes slow. Ah, so, so maybe sometimes 
it really not really uh, you know making the process faster it's just uh, they reduce the number of workers so there's a bottleneck basically that they need to uh, redesign some of the other processes uh, but that is introducing automation in uh, food services also i think like in japan there's a lot of other automation also buying a coupon before you buy udang <laughs> bukan that you buy that is also automation eh? because you, you remove the the uh, uh, the the waiter to actually take the order eh? okay the slide yeah okay we were here right just now we have already mentioned to you computer integrated manufacturing and of course uh, I think you can see a lot of the uh, latest development in terms of technology and services. Just now, that is uh, McDonald's is one of them. Financial services, debit card, electronic fund transfer, um, especially today. Okay, it's going to be you know more and more. You have to pay your bill, utilities. Okay, utilities and government. Government now, you know they. Uh, in Malaysia, for example, we have a lot of, you have to have uh, your own apps for bill payment, for example. You have apps for, you know, your uh, mobile services. Everything is all computer-based. Everything is, you know, they don't have, they don't have uh, minimum physical and, you know, uh, interaction. Everything is now pushing down to customer, okay? So we have to work, we have to work with that. So in education also, I think like online learning is going to be uh, something that students have to live with. <laughs> online learning, you know? Digital, digital. Some of the subjects will probably be still online after pandemic. I don't know. You know, in some countries, they're talking about that, which is not good. Actually, I don't, I do not actually, you know, agree hundred percent to all, you know, trying to teach. So government, education, financial services, restaurants, communication, all these are changing rapidly, very rapid, very rapid. Transportation, hotels also. Now there are still hotels which have counters, check in. You know, if you are, you still contact with me after five years, and if I'm still around, I'm still living, you tell me five years after ten years from now, maybe sixty percent hotel, seventy percent is automated check in check out. Same like banking, banking, you know, no more. Huh? So these are changing. Okay, mobile web booking point of sales terminals like Uniqlo, more Uniqlo's terminals, uh, you know, checkout counters, if e-commerce and so on. So all these are changing. Eh? Healthcare, online patient monitoring systems, so online medical information. This is, this is a bit scary, scary, you know, scary, scary. Robotic surgery. Do you want to go for robotic surgery? Do you, you know, uh, okay, let, let's ask, uh, let's ask, let's ask uh, Yu Hong. Yu Hong, do you want to yes. go for robotic surgery? If you are suddenly find that you have problems, you have to go for robotic surgery. You know robotic surgery? Ro robotic surgery? Uh, you know surgery? Surgery yes. means to do uh, some yeah. operation on your yeah. body. Um, do you want to have a doctor in Malaysia and then from the camera doing the cutting, stitching? You are in China. Do, do you? Uh, <laughs> okay. uh, I, I don't want, you I don't don't want. want a robot surgery. Want. I want a doctor. Most, most, most of us would want to have real doctor on us doing yes. the operation. So, yes. 
So I do not know how this is going to actually become successful. I, I don't know. I don't know. These are these are technology on the pipeline. These are things which are already being experimented, being tested. Yeah? Robotic surgery. No, I'm not going for robotic surgery. Not me. <laughs> not me. I don't. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, Shota, you want robotic surgery? It's okay. That you will come. Yes. Ah, that you will come. That you will come. Ah, so come. One. That you will come. Ah, no, I prefer the doctor. <laughs> you okay. That you will come. Yeah. Ah, so come. Ah, you want that you will come. You want that you will come. Ah, you you want that you will come. But uh, I I saw the robot um, real doctor control robot. Sorry, sorry, robot, robot is a Sorry, 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 robot is the control the robot. Okay, ka. It's okay. Marisha ni ma. Watashi wa. Why Okay, but those are uh, in the. There's a lot of research going on, and also there is a lot of studies, experiment. Okay, uh, but robot just now, if I say industrial robot for dangerous jobs, you know, hot item, steel, and so on, they use a lot of robots. Okay, in uh, industrial uh, factories, airlines. Okay, airlines, particular. These are already this this done. This already you know almost uh, automated. And transportation, you know, all this. Most are actually and uh, most are actually coming. Okay. But I have a. Okay, there is a last one is process redesign. Process design is actually trying to. There is a technique eh, to actually rethink how processes are being done. So it is a rethinking of business processes. When you say redesign, means we re rethink how to do the job. Okay, how to do the process. So you reevaluate the purpose of the process and question uh, the purpose and the assumption. You try to you know, find different way of doing things. So, uh, so you look at activities that cross function line and you can, you can, actually, uh, you can actually remove steps, combine steps. Yeah, remove or eliminate steps. So it is called process redesign. It was very popular in the early 2000s. They call it business process reengineering. Some books call it as business process reengineering, BPR. Okay. It's basically process redesign. You re redesign. You actually try to find, you know, a process that actually can. They have a saying in China, to see the country's past, go to Beijing. For the present, visit Shanghai, and for the future, it has to be Shenzhen. By Chinese standards, Shenzhen is a very young and futuristic oh, metropolis. Okay, let's, let's go the city positively bristles with innovation. Just 50 years ago, it was nothing but a tiny fishing village, but today, hundreds of skyscrapers dominate the skyline. At first sight, Shenzhen may appear to be just another densely populated Chinese metropolis, but for entrepreneurs and programmers, it's a technological mecca. It's hardly surprising that Shenzhen is considered to be China's Silicon Valley. The whole country's rapidly growing electronics industry is centered on the city. Every month, at least one international exhibition or trade fair is held here, 
either electronics, IT or automotive. New enterprises sprout like mushrooms here in the subtropical climate of Shenzhen. The standard of living is among the highest in the country, meaning that many foreigners and people from other Chinese cities aspire to live here. Li Chao is 28. He's lived in Shenzhen for 10 years, but is originally from a northern town called Baozi. It was true love that drew himself to China's Silicon Valley. He really loves robots. These machines have almost everything a person has. Arms, legs, a torso and head. So far, the Ubtech... Um, I mean, you, you, will, you will understand what I'm trying to convey to you. Right? That you need to actually be aware of the... Uh, technology even you are even you are not a technology but i noticed japanese um, even the normal population or normal people appreciate technology higher than in malaysia even though you are you are non engineering but your appreciation of technology is higher because in your media television therapy you no know, taksan uh, technology no and uh, you will get but in Malaysia, Malaysia, no terrible, you are dumb. Man. <laughs> man, you want my dumb. Man. No knowledge, knowledge. Uh, so, future, I think China will lead the future, okay? Not, not Japan. Japan already passed, really. <laughs> Japan already. But Japan is the big country in the world, you know, top countries, Japan, G7. Eh? But China is moving up, okay? Very fast. Okay, who? Any any impression? I think China. I think China is forcing. Yeah, not forcing. Uh, focus focus on the everything. They they want to make. I mean, we we want to make everything smart. Everything according, smart. Yeah, according not not only the city, but uh, every. Uh, Every, every industry? Uh, yeah, every like home, appli uh, home appliance and uh, I mean everything. House, smart house. Yeah, 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 yeah smart, smart house, house. Yeah. Smart factories. I mean, you have the capacity. Okay? You have manpower, you have uh, money. Uh, only. Uh, well, some, something good, something bad. Anything we do, technology, they're good, they're bad. Okay. Right. Any other? Any, any other? Any question before? You Hong, any question? Nine. Are you Nine. Ah. Yuki. Chen. Hi. Yes. yes. Hi, more than you will. <laughs> yes, any, any question? So no you, questions. No questions, okay. Uh, and you lay very quiet. Any questions? 